birth date, please? December 6th, 1935. Um, when did you graduate from high school? I graduated in June 1953 from uh, Immaculate Conception High School in Elmhurst, Illinois. My parents were Earl James Hilligan and Margaret Donegan Hilligan. My father uh, was originally from Michigan and uh, spent part of his uh, education at the University of Minnesota, finished at the University of Michigan in the late 20s with a degree in journalism, became a newspaper man for approximately 15 years, worked for the Detroit Free Press and uh, then the Associated Press. In approximately 1940, uh, he was appointed as publicity director of the American League Baseball uh, Office and uh, remained in that capacity for 20 years. Uh, thereafter, in approximately 1959-1960, he uh, uh, created his own public relations firm and he did that sort of work until his retirement. My mother was born in Ann Arbor, Michigan, grew up there. Uh, she married my father, and uh, after their marriage, they spent some time in Detroit. Uh, I was born to them in uh, Ann Arbor in 1935. Uh, shortly thereafter, they moved to Chicago. As I indicated, uh, my father had a job with the Associated Press. Uh, my sister was born in 1940, and my mother uh, was a homemaker, housewife, uh, for her entire life. My sister, uh, four and a half years my junior, very pretty young child, but uh, not in the best of health. Uh, suffered from chronic bronchitis uh, for many years of her early childhood. Um, she graduated from the same high school I did, five years behind me and went on to get a degree in speech therapy from Marquette University in Wisconsin. For the first 13 years of my life on this, in Chicago, Illinois, on the south side of Chicago, at, at uh, the age of 13, the family moved to a Chicago suburb, Elmhurst, Illinois. It's about 20 miles west of Chicago. And I remained there through high school and college and uh, at uh, during summer times uh, in law school until about 1960, age of 24. When you were a child, what would a great day have been? What, what would have just been a, a fantastic day out of your childhood? Well, Christmas was always a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween was exciting. Um, well, I enjoyed sporting sports softball, baseball, touch football. We couldn't play regular football in the streets of Chicago. Um, going around the neighborhood on my bike with my friends. We had a great deal of independence in those days. Uh, all children did then as compared to the childhood of many now. Um, but uh, Also, going with my father out to see a baseball game. It's part of his job to go to the ballpark uh, often, and on uh, many of those occasions he brought me, and I can remember uh, at Comiskey Park, old Comiskey Park in Chicago, watching many baseball games and enjoying that. I can remember one time when uh, we had a terrific snowfall in Chicago, and uh, uh, we were able to stay home from school for two or three days on the assumption that Nobody could get out, but of course, boys my age, say 12 years old at the time, found a way to get out and have a great deal of fun yeah. in, the, in the snow. <laughs> when would you say you became independent from your parents? Probably when I graduated finally from law school, and that would have been in 1960. Because from that point, I entered the Navy and was in the Navy for 22, 23 years after. Well, I graduated from the University of Notre Dame in June of 1957, and I went on to law school and graduated from there in 1960, at the University of Michigan. Back up a bit, my one of the summers I spent in high school was 
Uh, I had a job at a tin can factory where day in and day out I, my job was to solder the seams of leaking tin cans. It was dreadfully boring work in a noisy uh, place. Uh, I hated it. I loved being able to leave work on Friday knowing that I didn't have two days of, of work ahead of me. I was depressed late Sundays with the thought I had five days of work ahead of me. That motivated me a great deal once I got to college. And I was a, a very good student, uh, not so much, I think, based on brain power, but based on the time I was willing to spend with my studies. And therefore, I graduated very high in my class at Notre Dame. Uh, the story about the tin can factory, I think, must be one of your favorites, because I've heard it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, law school was difficult uh, also uh, because it was a good law school and uh, a lot of uh, effort to be spent, but uh, as compared to Notre Dame, the University of Michigan was a, a, lot, a lot more fun. Uh, by that time I had a car, uh, there were uh, co-eds, uh, female students all over the place, and there was a lot of partying going on, something that we never had at uh, South Bend at Notre Dame. Upon graduation from law school, I entered the Navy. It wasn't a, it was a choice of mine, but it was a sort of a forced choice in the sense that in those years there was the draft, and uh, having a, reached the age of uh, 24 and never having served in the military, it was a certainty that I would be drafted. So the choice I had was to either uh, be drafted and serve two years as an enlisted man in the Army, or use my law degree, uh, go into one branch or other of the services as an attorney uh, for three years, and I chose the latter. And was fortunately, uh, once I entered the Navy, my initial duty assignment after training in Newport, Rhode Island, was to be sent to Spain, and that was a delightful experience. Once I got out of law school, it was just only a couple of months lapsed before I entered the Navy. And uh, so my real civilian career didn't start until I retired from the Navy in 1982. And actually, I didn't start work uh, in the civilian sector until 1984 as a deputy district attorney for the county of Nevada in California. And from there, uh, I remained in uh, private practice or as a member of the staff of the district attorney's office in two counties or as the district attorney in those two counties until my retirement in, 19, in 2007. Uh, I married your mother, Valerie Ann Hope, in February of 1965. Married Pam in December 19. 96. What have you enjoyed most and least about being a parent? Well, the, just, just the joy of, of knowing that you were responsible for the being of a child, that uh, the child's existence was the result of, of you. And the downside, of course, was that uh, whatever activities we had uh, had been enjoying to that point in time were thereafter changed. I won't say restricted, but they were changed uh, because uh, the, the new part of the equation was the, was the new child. Um, what was I like as a young child? <laughs> you were physically very active. In two reg I'll give you two examples. Uh, in, in, your, uh, in your bed, which of course had rails on it, um, you would get up on your knees and your hands and rock back and forth. And we could hear that all the time. And you would do it in a fashion that the, the bed would actually move. Oftentimes, if it wasn't impeded, it would move right across the room. So I had to put casters in the floor to keep the bed from moving. But uh, that was one example of your, your physical activity. Um, the second example is that we had what we call a jolly jumper. It's sort of a, 
canvas seat suspended by uh, elastic uh, ropes from a doorway and used to get that thing and bounce up and down, up and down. I just loved it. Well, Aaron wouldn't back down from anybody, and even with larger children. Uh, she thought she was getting pushed around, and often she uh, protected uh, Mora physically when they were both uh, confronted by bullies and the like. Um, How would you describe in a nutshell your spiritual beliefs? I believe in God. I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ as Savior. I believe that our spiritual salvation comes through Christ. I haven't always been so strong in my beliefs in that regard, but uh, um, that's the way they are now, and that's the way I presume they're going to remain for the balance of my life. Is there anyone who was a, of particular influence on you in this regard, and how so? Well, I believe Pam has been uh, a great deal. Um, uh, I believe your mother uh, was an inspiration as far as looking within and being more contemplative or meditative. A couple of questions regarding relationships. First of all, who was your first girlfriend? <laughs> Well, I think it was a, uh, a girl named Barbara in seventh or eighth grade. <laughs> and, uh, what important lessons have you learned about relationships? Well, they're the most Im one of the most important things uh, a person can have. Uh, not just relationships with other people, but relationships with the Creator. Uh, but without relationships and without love in your life, uh, what's it all been good for? 